Welcome back to the Holmes Road Church of Christ evening service. I'm glad that you were able to log on today and, and join us. Hopefully you were logging in the Facebook Live to watch our morning service because uh, we did uh, go online only today because of this, the snowstorm that we got. So um, let's start off our worship today with um, Jesus is a well and alive today. Blue skies and rainbows and sunbeams from heaven are what I can see. When the Lord is living in me, I know that Jesus is well and alive today. He makes his home in my heart. Nevermore will I be all alone and see. Promise me that we never would part. Green grass and flowers all blooming in springtime. Our works of the Master I live for each day. I know that Jesus is well and alive today. He makes his home in my heart. Nevermore will I be all alone since sea. Promise me that we never would part. Tall mountains, green valleys, the beauty that surrounds me all makes me aware of the one who made it all. I know that Jesus is well and alive today. He makes his home in my heart. Nevermore will I be all alone and see. Promise me that we never would part. I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. I'm in the glory land way. Telling the world that Jesus stays today. Yes, I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is nearer and the way grow with clearer for I'm in the glory land way. List to the call, the gospel calls today. Get in the glory land way. Wanderers come home, oh, hasten to obey. For I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is nearer and the way grow with clearer for I'm in the glory land way. Onward I go rejoicing in his love. I'm in the glory land way. Soon I shall see him in that home above. Oh, I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is nearer and the way grow is clearer for. I'm in the glory land way. Welcome back, uh, Home Road Church of Christ. Thank you for coming back and worshiping with us this evening. We are looking at the book of Hebrews. And Dave, we appreciate the song service that you gave us. We're looking at the book of Hebrews on Sunday nights. We've been, uh, last time we met, we went through uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1, uh, all the way through 11. And uh, so tonight we're going to be looking at just two verses. It's just going to be two verses, but it's going to be a powerful two verses. And, and so if you have your book, your Bible with you, go ahead and open it to Hebrews 4. And we're just going to look at 12 and 13. Two simple verses, but there's a lot in it that we're going to look at. Just to give you a quick review of what we've done up so far, we've learned from the Hebrew writer that Jesus was God, and he's completely superior to everything, including the angels. We also learned that Jesus was man, he was flesh, 
He left the Godhead, so to speak, and he left the equality with God. He didn't see it as something to be grasped, but came, took a position lower, and then even the angels became flesh, became man. But even in that sense, even as he was man, he was superior to every man that ever existed, including Moses, and so we we dealt with that for a while. And then we and then there was a little transition into the fact that Jesus is God and the fact that Jesus is man superior to everything. We need to guard our hearts so that we can enter the promised land and be with Jesus someday. And so uh, we needed we, we learned about make sure we guard our hearts so that we can do that. And then the last time we met, we looked at the fact that we need to accept the word of God with faith so that we will not fall short of the land of rest like many of the Israelites did in the time of Moses' days. They fell short of entering the promised land because they didn't guard their hearts. And so we need to accept the word of God, not just listen to it, just know it, because all those people, they knew God. They, they uh, in, saw incredible things, and yet they still fell short because they let their hearts get hard. And so we talked, looked at the fact that we need to accept the word of God with faith in, in order to prevent our hearts from getting hard. And so now that's where we are at Hebrews chapter 4. Let's look at verses 12 and 13 together. The writer writes, For the Lord of God is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. So once again, on this aspect of guarding the heart, we should guard the heart because as these two particular verses just told us, we guard the heart and we spend a lot of time protecting and make sure our heart does not get hard because God's word has an unbelievable ability to diagnose the condition of a man better than any surgeon's precision. It talks about the word of God here is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, which is a fine translation, but can also be termed as the surgeon's scalpel. Imagine a guy with, a, with uh, an instrument that, that he's, he's so sharp he's ready to do surgery, and that's the, way he, that's the way word of God is. It's sharper than even the most sharpest of surgeon's scalpel. And it can penetrate and divide soul and spirit, joints and marrow. God's word has an ability to lay open the heart and accurately discern the spiritual health and condition of a person. That's what God's word does for us. And so we need to be in God's word so we can always be making sure our heart has the right surgery going on, that we are able to look at our heart and keep it right with God. God's word has the ability to expose our weakness with sharp accuracy. And so that's what these verses are letting us know. Guard our hearts with God's, with God's word because it has the ability to let us know where we need to improve, where we have been wrong. Like that surgeon's scalpel. God's word has the ability to bring health, fruitfulness, prosperity, and success. Now we can, we can find this specifically in Psalm chapter 1 verses 2 through 3. In Psalm 1, 2 through 3, the, the psalmist says, But whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on it, who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. The law of the Lord allows someone to prosper, to not wither. And so this is a very important scripture, and it's telling us that God's word has that kind of ability. It can bring us prosperity, success, health, and fruitfulness. Also, God's word has an ability, has a power to heal 
by bringing delivery from and out of oppression. That's another thing God's Word does. God's Word is alive and active, said Hebrews 4.12. It's alive and active. It helps you in so many ways. And in this sense, look at Psalm 107, verses 18 through 20. In Psalm 107, 18 through 20, the psalmist writes, They loathed all food and drew near the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. And so in this particular psalm, they're, they're talking about how oppressed they are. They're being, they're being overcome by their enemies. They're almost to the point of death. But God has the ability to heal and to rescue them from that grave. And so we know God's word has the ability to bring delivery from and out of oppression. That's the power of God's word, but it doesn't stop there. God's word can clean us. Have you ever thought about that? God's word can clean us. Whenever we, whenever we have an infection in our body, we go to a doctor and, and they try to clean the wound out. They, they clean it and try to heal us. Well, in the same sense, the word of God heals and cleans us. Look at Psalm 119 and verse 9. In Psalm 119, 9, it says, How can a young person cleanse his way by living according to your word. The word has the ability to cleanse you. And so much like a surgeon's scalpel, the word can do so many things. It can bring health, prosperity, prosperity uh, fruitfulness and success. It can bring, uh, it can deliver you from oppression. It can clean you. But it doesn't stop there. There's so many more things the Word of God can do for us. God's Word can also keep us from sin. We talked this morning about sin and iniquity and transgression. Well, God's Word has the ability to keep us from that. Look at Psalm 119, verse 11. It says, I've hidden your Word in my heart that I might not sin against you. That when we keep the Word with us all the time, in, in 24-7 we're engaged in the Word, then we're not going to sin. We're not going to sin because the Word is with us and it's constantly telling us what we need to do. As I mentioned this morning, the archery, hitting the mark, when we have the mark with us, we're not going to miss it. And so that's what God's Word says. The God's word has the ability to keep us from sin. God's word has the ability to counsel and provide guidance. Yes, even today in, in the year 2022, it can counsel and provide guidance. This is not a history book that only dealt with people way back then. In Psalm 119 verse 24, he says, Your statutes are my delight. They are my counselors. The Word of God is a counselor for you. It can tell you how to live your daily life, even today. God's Word is active. It is alive. It is powerful. It is sharper than any double-edged sword. Nothing in creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of Him, to whom we must give account. God's word is a source of strength. In Psalm 119, verse 28, it says, My soul is weary with sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Folks, maybe you right now are in a position in your life when you're weary with sorrow. You've had enough depression. You've had enough sadness. And it's just, you're, sad, you're tired. You're sick and tired of being sad. Well, look what he just said. Strengthen me according to your word. God's word has the ability to give you strength, to lift you up. And so God's word is a powerful thing. God's word is ne a never-ending source of life. It's a never-ending source of life. Look at Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. Jesus says, man shall not live on bread alone, 
but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We have to eat to sustain life. If we don't eat, we perish. And God says, that's what my word is. You feast on my word, it will bring you life. You, you can't live on just bread alone. That candle's only the physical. But you want to truly live, then go to the word of God. Go to the mouth of God. That's where real life is. But it doesn't stop there. God's word is also an illuminating light that makes one wise in understanding. Yes, many of you probably know where I'm going with this one. Psalm 119, 105. Many of you have this memorized. It's a memory verse from when you were a kid. But your word, your word, the word of God is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. It's an illuminating light that makes us wise in understanding. We know what to do. We know where to go because of God's word. We know how to walk this this, through this whole world because of God's word. And that's why the Hebrew writer says God's word is alive and active. God's word also gives peace. We talked this morning about healing from, uh, from so many things in the last couple of years. We need to be people of the word. In Psalm 119 and 165, it says, Great peace have those who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. Nothing can make them stumble. When they have peace, when you are in God's word to the degree that, that, that you love it, and you crave it, and you desire it, and you'd rather be reading God's word and saying God's word than anything else, Man, he says nothing's going to make you stumble when you have that kind of love for God's word. Nothing, not COVID, not the face of death, not journeying in loneliness, nothing is going to make you stumble in the peace that God can give you through his word. God's word can give peace. And then we also find out that God's word is what allows you to bear fruit. In Matthew chapter 13 and verse 23, it says, The seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Did you catch it? The seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. See, that's what God's word does. It can help you bear fruit. Maybe you're saying, I'm not doing a lot for God's word. I'm not doing a lot for God's church. I'm not doing enough work. I'm not bearing fruit. Well, get into the word. Because the word has a way to challenge you. The word has a way to spur you on. And when you understand the word and you hear the word, it will produce fruit. It will give you a sown crop. That's from scripture. I'm not telling you that. The scripture just told you that. God's word also is essential for eternal life. If you have your Bible, turn to John chapter 5, verse 24. In John 5:24, it says, Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who has sent has eternal life and will not be judged by his but has crossed over from death to life. Folks, when we hear the word of God, it gives us belief, it gives us faith in Jesus, and we do what God says to do, that's where eternal life is. And so God's word can, has the power to bring us eternal life. But it doesn't stop there. <laughs> There's a lot this is why the Hebrew writer says God's word is alive and sharper than a surgeon's scalpel. It's sharper than a double-edged sword. God's word is evidence of true discipleship. God's word is the evidence of true discipleship. Look at John chapter 8 and verse 31. In John 8, 31, 
John says, uh, he writes, To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my word, you are really my disciples. If you hold to my word, then you're my disciples. And so when we are people of God's word, God says that's the evidence of being a true disciple. That's how people will know. Have you ever been worked with somebody and you take a coffee break and they, they're, you're, you're over there chatting or whatever, you look over and some guy's using their break to read his Bible. Or maybe a student at school, you're having a good time in the cafeteria with your lunch buddies and, and you look over and someone's reading their Bible. Your first thought is, man, that guy is dedicated to God. And that's what he's saying. When someone is dedicated to the word, that's true discipleship. That's evidence of true discipleship. God's word is the only way to find sanctification. God's word is the only way to find sanctification. Look at John 17, 17. In John 17, 17, it says, Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. So you're only sanctified by truth, and the word is truth. So therefore, if you want to be sanctified, if you want to be set aside as holy, if you want to be holy in, before God's eyes, you need to be in God's word. And God's word builds faith. In Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it says, So then, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Not hearing by the word of Stan, not hearing by the word of the elders, hearing by the word of God. So God's word builds faith. God's word also preserves your salvation. When you are baptized into Jesus Christ and you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and you're added into the book of life, you are added to the church, you are amongst the saved, but it doesn't end there. You have to preserve it. 1 Corinthians 15 chapter 2 says, By which also you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. So it's not just you're saved once and for all time. You're saved as long as you continue your rest of your life holding fast to the word of God. Wow, folks, let me tell you something. The word of God is powerful. That's exactly what this Hebrew writer is trying to let you know in chapter 4. In verse 12, the word is active and alive. And it is sharper than than anything you can imagine. God's word is the source of growth. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, it says, As newborn babies desire pure milk of the word, that you may grow. In other when, when babies, they cannot grow unless they have the milk to help them grow along the nourishment. And in the same way, when you're baptized into Christ, you become a baby, but you need the Word of God every day to help you continue to grow. People say, I'm not growing in my faith. Then you need to get more into the Word. You need to have the desire for milk like a baby does. When a baby gets hungry, he starts crying and trying to let people know, I'm hungry, I need something. Man, we should be the same way, like babies. With the Word of God should be our nourishment and it provides that growth god's word is living and it is powerful and that's what tonight's lesson is about from the book of hebrews so i have one question for you tonight i have one question to ask yourself tonight and that is are you of the word are you of the word Folks, God's word is powerful, it is active, it is alive. It can bring health, fruitfulness, prosperity, success. It can deliver you from oppression. It can clean you and keep you from sin. It can provide guidance and strength and counsel. It's a never-ending source of life. It illum it's an illuminating light that makes us wise and understanding. It gives us peace. It allows you to bear fruit. It's an essential 
for eternal life. It's the evidence of true discipleship. It's the only way to sanctification. It's the only way to build faith. It helps us preserve our salvation. And it makes us grow daily. Are you in the word? Are you a person of the word? Then maybe that needs to be a New Year's resolution for you tonight. Maybe you need to say, I need to become more of a person of the word. And that is the lesson for you this evening. If you need to respond in any way. Call me, text me, call, text one of the elders. Reach out in some way that we can help you. And let us know how we can help. Let's sing this song together. To Canaan's land, I'm on my way where the soul never dies. My darkest night will turn to day where the soul never dies. No sad farewell, no tear in thy eyes, where all is love and the soul never dies. Oh, roses blooming there for me, where the soul never dies, and I will spend eternity where the soul never dies no sad farewell no tear dim dies where all is love and the soul never dies a love like beam across the foam where the soul never dies it shines to light the shores of home where the soul never dies no sad farewell no tear in eyes where all is love and the soul I'm on my way to that fair land where the soul never dies, where there will be no parting and and the soul never dies, no sad farewell, no tear dim dies, where all soul never dies. Let us say a closing prayer. Dear God, thank you for letting us gather today during this snowy day, Lord. Let us gather in spirit as we watch together online. Let our souls be entangled and let each and every one of our worshiping that we've done today be pleasing to you. Bless each and one of our members, Lord, as they continue on with their week. Bless them and have them be encouraged by something this week that will know that uh, they are loved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.